Hello everyone, and welcome once again to Caleb Likes Books. I am Caleb, and today I'm going to be starting my October horror month type of thing. Uh, this month I am going to be primarily discussing more horror-leaning books, um, because I think that would be appropriate for the month of October, uh, being Halloween and all. So I'm going to be starting this video. Uh, with my top five HP Lovecraft stories. Originally, I was going to do a top ten, but um, I kind of felt like I wasn't really able to talk about some stories in as much depth as I would like to, um, because some of them were very short, and I just didn't really have a whole lot to say about them, and I feel like if I'm doing a ranking list, I should be able to just kind of talk about the stories a bit. But I'll still talk about some of my honorable mentions that um, would have been in the top 10 or top 15, but did not make the top 5. And before I get started, I'm going to quickly say uh, two things. First of all, this video will be pretty much uh, spoiler-free. And the second thing is I'm just going to quickly show you uh, my collection of Lovecraft books. Um, I have a few of, and um, one of them, uh, you can find all of my top 5 uh, in that uh, book. Um, but I'm just going to show all of them, so if you happen to be interested in any of them, um, you can take a look and maybe get them for yourself. So the first one is the one that I kind of started with, which is H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, Cthulhu Mythos Tales. This is the Word Cloud Classics Edition. All five of the short stories that I'm going to talk about within my actual top five you can find in this. Um, so if you find those particularly interesting and you haven't read Lovecraft before, um, you can pick this up and get those five stories, plus a lot of other great ones. And again, this is where I started with Lovecraft. I'm pretty new to Lovecraft's work. I kind of became interested in it about this time last year, actually. Uh, picked this up at the end of last year and uh, slowly worked my way through it throughout the first four or five months of this year. Um, and I really enjoyed it quite a lot. A few other ones that I have, I have uh, Arcturus Classics editions um, of Macabre Stories, which I just finished reading. I have uh, Stories of the Dreamlands, and then I have a box set uh, called the Necronomicon box set, which is not just Lovecraft. Um, you can see here it has five books, only one of them, The Call of Cthulhu and Other Stories, is actually by Lovecraft. The other four I have not yet read, but I intend to read those in October, and I will probably be reviewing this box set in its entirety sometime in October, so if you're interested in that, then keep an eye out for that. But first, I'm going to talk about some of my honorable mentions um, that didn't quite make the top five. Uh, the first one I'm going to mention is The Shadow Over Innsmouth, which barely didn't make it in my original list. It was my number six. Um, but uh, that's a great story, classic Lovecraft. I really enjoy it. Um, some of my other ones include um, Dagon and The White Ship. The Case of Charles Dexter Ward, uh, The Tomb, The Horror in the Museum. All of those are great stories that I very much enjoy, but they just didn't make my top five. So starting the list at number five, I have The Color Out of Space. Um, now this one, uh, kind of the premise of it is this asteroid or some sort of object from outer space crashes to Earth um, in this kind of farmland area, I believe. Um, and it kind of messes stuff up. It makes the uh, soil and the vegetation, animals, and even the people in the area, uh, some not super fantastic things begin happening to all of them. And I think this is also, um, from what I have heard, uh, Lovecraft claimed that this was his favorite of his stories, which is really interesting. Um, but the reason I have it at my number five is, first of all, because it's just an enjoyable story. Um, it has a very kind of unsettling vibe to it, which is something that Lovecraft does very well. Um, but uh, I really enjoy that about it, and I also think that this story, um, more than pretty much any of the others in my top five, uh, really exemplifies very well what cosmic horror is. You know, cosmic horror is kind of um, the horror of experiencing something that is beyond your comprehension, beyond your understanding, something that you just witness and you cannot explain it, but it terrifies you. And I think this story exemplifies that very well because this thing from outer space crashes on Earth and maybe it's not even necessarily a color as Lovecraft put it, puts it, but that's the closest approximation to something that humans can uh, give an, it as a name. Um, and it just does some really bad things, and I think it just exemplifies what cosmic horror is very, very well. Just this uh, weird, 
uh, mysterious kind of incomprehensible thing that uh, is experienced by the characters in the story um, that terrifies them because of what it does. Um, and I think it just exemplifies very well what cosmic horror as a whole really is, and considering Lovecraft is kind of the one who really uh, created cosmic horror, um, I think it is a great story to read um, if you are new to Lovecraft and you kind of want to get that sense of it, and it's just a good story in general. My number four I have is The Dreams in the Witch House. Uh, now this is one that uh, when I first read it I thought it was good but it wasn't quite one of my favorites and then I read it again the second time around um, I enjoyed it a lot more and it became one of my favorites. The premise for this one is basically the narrator um, is in this house he uh, is staying in and he uh, has very strange dreams um, involving this other character um, this kind of creepy character and this rat-like thing um, and the dreams kind of start to bleed into real life uh, and all this kind of stuff. It's a really interesting story um, and it uh, again kind of like color out of space but I think even to a greater degree just has this very creepy and unsettling feeling to it that I really enjoyed. My number three is actually one that I think uh, within the Lovecraft community um, you know, I'm quite, uh, active over on the, uh, r slash Lovecraft on Reddit. Um, I don't post on there a whole lot, but I like to look through there quite often. And this is one that does not get mentioned very often when it comes to people's favorites. Um, and that is The Mound. The premise of this one is, uh, that the, uh, narrator kind of sees some very odd things, uh, around this mound in the landscape. Uh, goes to investigate it and discovers kind of this whole underground civilization type of thing. Um, and I really just enjoy that aspect of it. This uh, I really enjoy how Lovecraft in a couple of his stories um, kind of explores these uh, civilizations, these ones that are very different from our own and very unusual and interesting um, and I also just liked the kind of more creepy vibe that this one had as well, although I don't think it was quite to the extent, at least for most of it. They're kind of at the beginning and the end. I think it very much had this very creepy, unsettling sort of feel to it, um, but I especially just loved um, the discovering this other civilization and all this stuff. It's one of my favorite things that Lovecraft does. He doesn't do it a huge amount in his stories, but when he does do it, I think it is absolutely fascinating. Number two is probably the most uh, well-known Lovecraft story, perhaps maybe uh, outdone by The Shadow over Innsmouth, but I think this one probably edges it out, and that's The Call of Cthulhu, which is the very first Lovecraft story I read, and to this day is still one of my favorites. The premise of this one is that the narrator uh, has a relative, I believe a grandfather, if I remember correctly, who passes away um, and he's looking through his things and he finds all this stuff about the cult of Cthulhu and all these things. And Cthulhu is basically this um, great old one, I believe, is the classification that he's given. This alien entity that um, lives on Earth but is uh, dead and dreaming uh, in a sunken city of early A. The cult of Cthulhu basically is preparing for his return and worshipping him and all of this stuff um, because when the stars align in just the right way he is going to reawaken and take over Earth or whatever uh, happens basically and um, it kind of goes into all of that stuff uh, kind of learning more about um, the cult, learning more about Cthulhu. Um, it's one of the best stories, I think, for the Cthulhu mythos, if you're particularly interested in that. And it's just a very interesting story overall. This is another one of the ones that I've read a couple of times now, um, and I really enjoyed it the first time, and the second time it just got even better for me. Um, and it's just one of my favorite Lovecraft stories, so it's my number two. And finally, ending off the list at my number one is At the Mountains of Madness. Um, if you have read this and The Mound, um, or even just this one, uh, and having just listened to my description of The Mound, um, the reasons why this one is one of my favorites, or actually my favorite, uh, is very similar to that of The Mound. Um, so the premise of this one is that there is this expedition to Antarctica, and the narrator is a part of that. 
Uh, he's on a, a big team of a bunch of people who go there to kind of look around and see if there's anything they can find. And it leads to the discovery of this long lost, um, not currently going, like it's completely abandoned basically, but this uh, discovery of an alien civilization older than humanity itself. And again, I love this one for similar reasons as The Mound. Um, first of all, it still has that kind of unsettling feel to it. Some very not fun things happen in this story, as is uh, typical for Lovecraft. But also, I just loved learning about this other civilization and all this stuff. The sense of discovery that is intriguing, but also kind of terrifying. Uh, and I just love that. And I love the ending for the story as well. Again, not really any spoilers here. But uh, if you have read the story, um, you'll probably know, like, the narrator, as he is escaping from Antarctica, um, some stuff happens that I think is really interesting. It's very mysterious, um, but I think it's really well done. And the ending itself, uh, what happens is something that I really like to kind of think about, like, what is it that really happened there? I really enjoyed that aspect of it, and I just love this story in general. It is, I think, a bit uh, much in terms of length. Maybe it goes into a lot of, like, scientific, like, talk and all that stuff, which is kind of dry, but the story itself I really, really enjoyed. So that is basically it for my list. Let me know down in the comments uh, if you happen to have read any Lovecraft, what your favorite stories of his are. Um, I apologize that this was only a top 5 rather than a top 10, but I did want to do a top 10, but uh, it just didn't really work out so well for me. But let me know down in the comments uh, what your favorite Lovecraft stories are, or if you maybe haven't even read any of his stories, what uh, ones out of the ones that I talked about sound the most interesting to you, and if you happen to be interested uh, in reading Lovecraft, let me know down in the comments. And that is pretty much all I got for you today, so thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.